Would you please bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we gather here in your house this day, continuing to look forward to the coming celebration of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. And today, Lord, we hear from your prophets, your messengers, with a very important message to repent, to prepare our hearts, our very lives for his coming, to be our Savior, to be our Lord, to be the one who gives us forgiveness of all of our sins. Equip us, Lord, on this day, and be with us each day to truly have hearts that are made straight, to have lives that are lifted, and areas that are lowered, so that we might truly be prepared for the coming celebration of our Savior. So I ask now, Lord, to be the words of my mouth and the meditations of all the hearts that are gathered here together, that we might be and abide in your presence. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto all of you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jim had a very unique and special Christmas list. He called it the My Refinement List. He started when he was 45 years old and kept at it for 29 years. Now he was 74. And his grandson came in with a piece of paper in his hand. He said, Grandpa, what is this? Grandpa said, well, that's a, my Christmas list. Is it things that you want for Christmas? No, it's not that kind of list. Is it things you're going to get for other people for Christmas? It's not that kind of list either. And then Grandpa Jim went on to explain. He said, a few weeks before Christmas, I write down things I'd like God to help me get rid of, like selfishness, impatience with your grandmother, and maybe wanting too many things for myself. I figure the more of these things I get rid of like that, the more I'll be able to celebrate all the good things that God has to give to all of us. Now, Grandpa Jim's list was a way of preparing for God's coming. It was a type of spiritual house clean of sort for a, a very special guest. Jim's Advent preparation had to do with things like selfishness and impatience and greed, materialism. It was a special kind of preparing for the Advent of our Lord. Now, the question I want you to consider this morning is, are any of these struggles things that need to be on your Advent refinement list? Now, I ask that because that's what our prophets today are, at, are calling us to do, both Malachi and John the Baptist. They're telling us to keep in mind an idea of repentance for the coming of Jesus. You see, one is from the Old Testament and one is from the New Testament, but they both speak of the same message. Cleansing is a way of preparation for the coming of our Lord. Now, both of them point to one who is greater than they, who is to come. So consider this. If God was going to come to your house today, what kind of cleanup would you want to do? What kind of cleanup do you need to do? Jim had his list. Malachi had his list. John had his list. And I'm going to encourage you that we should each have our lists as well. So this morning, I know I usually don't ask you this, but maybe you want to pull out your cell phone, use a little notes tab, or there's pencils and papers in each of the pews there for, for prayer notes. Take those out and consider jotting down what your Advent refinement list might look like. But let's start first with Malachi. Malachi was one of the last of the minor prophets, lived about the 5th century B.C. Now, during his time, he was telling people to prepare for the coming of God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. And so he speaks of clean up our lives, and he focuses on three areas. One is faithfulness in worship. Another one is in morality. And the third is in how we talk to God. Now, because of an economic depression of Malachi's day, God's people had become fairly lazy in their worship. They started thinking things like, well, why go to temple? Why pray to God? Why do anything for him? Because he obviously doesn't care for us. Why follow his commandments? You see, through thin harvests and droughts 
and locust-ridden crops. Most people came to this mind that God didn't care. So they started to stay away from worship. But beyond that, they stopped to tithing. They stopped giving their offerings to God, so they were robbing God. But that isn't a whole lot different than it is today. I mean, the biggest reason for faithlessness in worship is usually a personal crisis, or we can even say a global pandemic. You see, cheating God out of his tithes, our offerings, often comes from us not being able to cope with a crisis through faith. Now, does that hit any of your Advent refinement list? Let's think about the second thing he talks about, and that is immorality. Let's be honest, personal crises can always lead to immorality. And Malachi mentions five of them here. He talks about the practice of magic. Or secondly, sexual promiscuity. Third, distorting the truth in order to hurt other people. Fourth, cheating in the workplace. And fifth, not helping the most vulnerable in society. Do any of these five make your advent refinement list. I mean, cleaning up our immorality is one way of preparing to meet God, but also looking at your behavior in light of the Ten Commandments and how well we're running, as Tim gave us, according to God's ways or maybe running away from God's ways. Look at what God says through the prophet Malachi. He says, from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. So does breaking God's commandments something that needs to be on your Advent refinement list? Well, the third thing that Malachi gets to here is this repeated complaining, complaining against God. Is that something you ever struggle with, complaining against God? Well, this is what the Lord says through Malachi. He says, your words have been hard against me, says the Lord. But you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of us keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed. Evildoers not only prosper, but they put God to the test and they escape. You know, grumbling against God may well be on a lot of our Advent refinement lists. You see, getting ready for God's coming means a turning away from self-centered complaints. And that's not easy. But I'm here to tell you, don't worry, because you're not alone. The task of cleaning up all of our complaints, all of our sins, all that immorality, well, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the cleanup task that we're called to do is really the work of God's Spirit. He just calls us to cooperate with him. You see, God is at work in us, in our lives, helping us to do what needs to be done to prepare for his coming. How does he do that? Well, today we're given two dramatic visuals. You see, Malachi says that God works like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap to make us ready for the arrival of his son. Now, a refiner's fire is so hot that it begins to soften or even bring to a liquid form that metal that it's trying to purify. Well, all those impurities burn off. You can't imagine it being a very pleasant experience if you were the metal yourself, but that's what we're described in is God's working on us to refine us, which tells us that repentance isn't easy, but it's necessary. And I gotta say, in God's laundry, it is effective and it is strong. It's like an industrial detergent, like lye, that dissolves and destroys all the impurities from a clothing. So repentance is really a process of God working on us, scrubbing and treating us with harsh chemicals so we might maybe become clean and dazzling white. So you see this call to repentance, this turning away, or as Tim said, running the other way, is all the work of God's Spirit in us, like a refiner's fire, like a, like a fuller's soap. But in all this, Malachi points to the one who's coming. He points forward to God sending Elijah. 
And this is how Malachi says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. You see, John the Baptist is Elijah who fulfills Malachi's prophecy. John is that fiery prophet out in the wilderness who's repeating Malachi's words of preparing for the Lord's coming through repentance. Now, John's refinement list here has three points too. One is straightening crooked paths. Another one is uh, filling in valleys. And the other is lowering of mountains. Does your Advent refinement list include straighten out crooked paths in your life? Now, let's be clear what a crooked path is. Those things are, that are distorted or dishonest. Now, John said to those crowds that came down to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? You see, these crowds, including the religious leaders, they were like children of serpents. They were unrepentant sinners who refused to change their ways as distorted and dishonest as they had become. But second, filling in the valleys, that's not like straightening out crooked paths. No, many people are kept from proper preparation for our Lord's coming because of their emotions. They have this depression, this sense of inferiority to God. But here again, the focus is not on us, but rather on what God is doing and accomplishing. See, John says that God will fill up every valley, which means that God will comfort those who are afflicted. Those who are lost and, and scattered, he will bring them back in. And he will be their peace. You know, ever since I was in seminary, I always heard this statement of the role of a, a pastor or a prophet in speaking God's word to comfort the afflicted, to bring them in and, and share with them peace, and also to afflict the comfortable. Think about that. To comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And that's that third point that John gets to about the lowering of mountains. Dealing with those things, that, that pride that can get in our way of repenting. And really, repentance is John's ultimate theme. A turning around or a turning away from the ways that we've been following and turning back to God's ways. Turning away from those things that are sinful and corrupt and turning back to God. When I do my chapels with our kids here at preschool, I get them used to this normal mantra that we have in our prayers, help me to stop doing the bad things, and to start doing the good things. And that's what the prophets are calling us to do, to stop doing the, the bad things and start doing the good things. But remember, in all of this, we're not alone. God has given us his spirit so that the work that needs to be done in our hearts and our lives would be accomplished by his power. And he's also given us a Savior, who is Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. He took all of our sins, all of our dirtiness, all of our corruption, all of our impatience, and he nailed it to the cross. And then he gave to us forgiveness and life and salvation. So I know today there's a lot of law in this message because really that's what the prophets are doing. They're trying to get ready for the coming of our Savior. And so there's a challenge for us. And the challenge is, are we going to heed that call of the prophets? Are we going to repent and allow God to cleanse us with his refiner's fire, with his fuller's soap? Will we allow him to change us, to mold us, so that we would spend this season of Advent truly having a straight path to ready to re receive our Lord? So, what does your Advent refinement list look like? Jim's had selfishness, impatience, and greed. Malachi's, well, he had religious laziness. He had moral erosion. And he had all sorts of grumbling and complaining. John, he had dishonesty and crookedness. He had inferiority. And he had pride. What's on your list? What needs to be refined in your life to make ready for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ?
Amen.